Hi, welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. I'm Madison Miller. Today I'll talk about what went down in week 15 of the NFL, preview week 16, and also discuss NFL playoff scenarios where teams can clinch. And I'll make picks for the bowl games of college football between now and Christmas. Starting with uh, NFL Week 15, Thursday night, Denver beat the Colts of Indianapolis 25-13. to The Broncos were favored in the game by three and obviously covered. Um, both of these teams are pretty much playing for draft positioning. Um, Brock Osweiler um, came in for the injured Trevor Simeon and threw for 194 yards and two touchdowns. Um, Jacoby Percet, on the other hand, 17 for 30 and 158 yards. Um, so, yeah, like I said, draft positioning for each team. Uh, pretty much at this point, the Colts um, will probably get a top three pick, and I could totally see them flipping that pick to move down potentially for uh, more picks and assets, and we'll save... Um, draft talk for another day. Saturday, the Detroit Lions beat the Chicago Bears 20-10 to in a division matchup. The Lions' playoff hopes are alive still. Um, Matt Stafford, 237 yards and two touchdowns. Mitch Trubisky, 314 yards, a touchdown and three picks. Um, most of the yardage was in garbage time. So um, nothing really to take from Trubisky. Um, the Bears are obviously playing for positioning in the draft, too. Uh, the Lions, on the other hand, they're playing for a playoff spot at this point and uh, can still get in if they win out and get some help via Falcons if the Falcons lose any of their last two games. Also on Saturday night, the Kansas City Chiefs defeated the Los Angeles Chargers 30-13 in a big AFC West showdown. I think the Chiefs are going to win this division now that they won this game. Um, the Chargers were favored by one, and I thought that line was absurd, and so did that everybody else out there. Alex Smith threw for 231 yards and two touchdowns. Phil Rivers, 227 yards, a touchdown and three picks. Um, Chargers' big win streak comes to an end here. Um, they need some help if they want to get a wild card. And I think the division's a long shot, and the Chiefs pretty much, I think, have that wrapped up. Sunday, the Philadelphia Eagles beat the New York Giants 34-29. Eli Manning had a great game. 434 yards, three touchdowns, and one pick to keep the Giants... Um, I mean, to uh, try to convince the Giants that uh, he still is a good quarterback and that could help them win along the line, is assuming they improve for next year. And Nick Foles, on the other hand, filling in for the injured Carson Wentz, 237 yards and four touchdowns. Not bad for Foles. I still think that the Eagles will eventually miss Wentz and... Uh, That will prevent them from going to the Super Bowl. And although they do have a first round bye with that win. The Bills beat the Dolphins 24-16 to keep their playoff hopes alive. The Dolphins pretty much are dead in terms of playoff hopes. Jay Cutler, 274 yards but three interceptions. Tyrod Taylor, on the other hand, 224 yards and a touchdown in the win. And we'll see what happens with the Bills going forward in terms of whether they make the playoffs or not. The Panthers beat the Packers 31-14 in Aaron Rodgers' return game in which Rodgers threw for 290 yards, three touchdowns, and three picks, so he looked very rusty in his return. And Cam Newton threw for 242 yards and four touchdowns. The Ravens beat the Browns 27-10 to to keep their playoff hopes alive. Joe Flacco, 288 yards and a touchdown. Deshaun Kaiser, 146 yards and two picks. The Browns are obviously trying to wrap up the number one pick now 
Ravens, like I said, going for the wild card. The Jacksonville Jaguars convincingly beat the Houston Texans 45-7. to Blake Bortles, who has been improved over the last couple weeks, 326 yards and three touchdowns. TJ Yates filling in for the injured Tom Savage and is their third stringer with Watson out. 128 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. And now there's talks about Bill O'Brien and whether he survives sans all the injuries, and that's for another day. The Vikings beat the Bengals 34-7, so the Vikings are likely headed for a first-round bye. Case Keenum, 236 yards and two touchdowns. Andy Dalton, 113 yards and two picks. The Bengals, like I said last week, look like a team that's absolutely quit. And there was a report last week saying that Marvin Lewis is looking at options elsewhere. The New Orleans Saints beat the Jets 31-19. The Jets kept that game much closer than I anticipated. The Saints are probably on their way to a division title. Drew Brees, 281 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Bryce Petty filling in for the injured Josh McCown, 179 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. The Redskins beat the Cardinals 20-15 to in a meaningless game. Both teams are now 6-8. and eight. Kirk Cousins, 196 yards and two touchdowns. Blaine Gabbert, 189 yards and one pick. And what I thought was the most impressive performance of the week, the Los Angeles Rams going into Seattle and absolutely destroying the Seahawks 42-7. to Todd Gurley's amazing. He'll probably be in the MVP conversation with Wentz out now. And Jared Goff's amazing too. Although he his numbers were not great. 120 yards, two touchdowns in the pick. Gurley had 152 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. And on the, on the other side, Russell Wilson, 142 yards and a touchdown. In that awful, awful defeat. Um, The Patriots beat the Steelers 27-24 in a controversial ending. In which um, the Steelers looked to score the go-ahead touchdown. With um, less than a minute to go. And James, the tight end. They said that he dropped the game-winning touchdown. Meanwhile, um, it looked like a touchdown to me. And this um, controversial call can go a long way in determining uh, who goes to the Super Bowl in, in a weird way because if the Steelers win that game, they probably have home field advantage in the AFC instead of the Patriots. And you never know with that. So that said, Tom Brady, 298 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Ben Roethlisberger, 281 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. And the pick came at the very end of the game as he tried to do the fadeaway, the fake spike fadeaway that was tipped and that was the, the interception that he threw to seal the game. The San Francisco 49ers have won their third in a row by the score of 25-23 to over the Tennessee Titans. Robbie Gold, the kicker of the Niners, kicked the game-winning 45-yard field goal as time expired. Jimmy Garoppolo, who's been the big story here with the 49ers resurgence, another great game. 381 yards and a touchdown. Marcus Mariota of the Titans, 241 yards and two touchdowns. The Titans are still in the playoff mix for the AFC. I don't think it's a lock that they make it. But we shall see. The Dallas Cowboys beat the Oakland Raiders 20-17 to on Sunday night football. Dallas keeps their playoff hopes alive. The Raiders' playoff hopes are pretty much dead. Dak Prescott, 212 yards and two picks. Not great, but good enough for the win. Derek Carr, 171 yards and two touchdowns. But he pretty much cost the Raiders the game by fumbling at the line of scrimmage in the end zone as he was going for the go-ahead touchdown, but he dropped the ball, and it turns out to be a touchback. 
Falcons, Buccaneers, the Falcons take that one 21 to 24 or 24 21 last night on Monday Night Football. Atlanta is in the driver's seat in that wild card hunt in the NFC playoffs. Matt Ryan, 212 yards, one touchdown. Jameis Winston had a nice game for Tampa, 299 yards and three touchdowns. All right. And that's last week, this week. Here we go. Just the preview. I'm not doing my picks yet. I'll do the picks later on in the week on another podcast. Colts Ravens on Saturday afternoon at 430. Uh, like I said, the Colts are playing for draft positioning now, and the Ravens are looking to keep their playoff hopes alive. I'll get to the clinching scenarios in a second. Vikings Packers. Vikings trying to lock up the first round by. The Packers are eliminated from playoff contention, and news just broke that Packers are shutting down Aaron Rodgers for the remainder of the season after being eliminated from the playoffs. I think that's the right move by the Packers. And get well soon, Aaron Rodgers. Christmas Eve games. We got 12 of them. Buccaneers-Panthers. Panthers Panthers looking up to wrap up a playoff spot. Buccaneers playing for draft positioning. The worst game of the weekend, the winless Browns at the Bears. Both playing for draft positioning. Lions at the Bengals. Lions trying to um, stay alive in the playoff hunt. Cincinnati Bengals, like I mentioned before, they flat out quit. Miami Dolphins at the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, I think the Dolphins are finished, and uh, the Chiefs are looking to wrap up the AFC West. Bills at the Patriots is a meaningful game. Buffalo trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. New England trying to wrap up home field advantage in the AFC. Great game between Atlanta at New Orleans, the rematch of the Thursday night game from a few weeks ago. And the Falcons still have a long shot to win this division. If they win out, then they win the division. The Saints just need to win this game, I guess, to win the division. I'll get to the scenarios in a minute. I don't know them on the top of my head. Chargers-Jets. Chargers keeping their slim playoff hopes alive, and the Jets are playing for draft positioning. A decent one here, Rams at the Titans. The Rams are looking up to lock up that division for good. Although I think they pretty much have it locked up. And the Tennessee Titans keeping their trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. Meaningless game between the Denver Broncos and the Washington Redskins. They'll play for draft positioning. An intriguing one in the late afternoon slate. Jacksonville Jaguars against the red hot San Francisco 49ers. Jacksonville trying to lock up that division for good. And the 49ers uh, playing their way out of a top four pick. And I think the Niners have a chance to win that game because the Niners have been winning a lot of games lately. Seahawks at the Cowboys is enticing because of the return of Ezekiel Elliott. And the winner of this game's playoff hopes will be alive and the loser's playoff hopes will be dead. And this is what I'm going to call the loser leaves town match. We always get a couple of those every year. And this is a legit one because both teams are 8-6. and six, And what I just explained, the loser is pretty much done and the winner still has a shot. New York Giants at the Arizona Cardinals, a meaningless game. Drew Stanton starting for the Cardinals. Um, Giants trying to lock up the number two pick. So I don't know if they'll play a lot of their guys. And uh, Arizona's trying to, I think, trying to get a draft pick as well. And then on Christmas Day, you have the Steelers, who just announced that Antonio Brown is out for the rest of the regular season with the torn muscle in his leg at the Houston Texans, who are probably playing for draft positioning um, with all those injuries. And now there's rumors about Bill O'Brien's future, as I mentioned before. And also Monday night, the Oakland Raiders at the Philadelphia Eagles, and the Eagles are trying to lock up home field advantage in the NFC despite the loss of their quarterback, Carson Wentz. Now I'm going to get to the playoff scenarios for Week 16. 
and it should be very interesting because I think there could be chaos potentially. Um, so here we go. In the AFC, the New England Patriots can clinch home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs with the New England win. Obviously, a Pittsburgh loss and the Jacksonville loss are tie. They clinch a bye with a win and the pa- uh, a win in the Pittsburgh loss, a win and the Jacksonville loss or tie, or a or a tie in the Jacksonville loss. I doubt there's going to be any ties. Although, you never know. Pittsburgh Steelers already clinched the AFC North, and they can clinch a first round bye with a win and the Jacksonville loss or a tie, or a tie in a Jacksonville loss. Jacksonville's already clinched a playoff berth. They can clinch the AFC South with a win or a tie, or a Tennessee loss or a tie. Kansas City clinches the AFC West with a win, or a Chargers loss, or a tie, or a, tie, or a, a Chargers tie. I hate that they throw the ties in there. That's annoying. The Tennessee Titans can clinch a playoff berth with a win and a Baltimore loss and a Buffalo loss. The NFC. The Eagles, like I said, already clinched the NFC East in the first round bye. They can clinch home field advantage of the NFC playoffs with a win, a Minnesota loss, or a tie and a Minnesota tie. Minnesota Vikings already clinched the NFC North. They can clinch a first round bye with a win. And the Carolina loss or a tie. Or a Minnesota tie or a Carolina loss or a New Orleans loss or tie. or a Ra- And the Rams loss or tie. Okay, that's confusing. Let me read that one. A tie and the Carolina loss and a New Orleans loss or tie or a Rams loss or tie. I hate these ties. The Rams can clinch the, a- the NFC West with a win or a tie. Or a Seattle loss or a tie. The Rams can clinch a playoff berth. Yeah, the Rams have not clinched a playoff berth yet. That's surprising to me. They can clinch a playoff berth with a Detroit loss or tie and the Carolina loss and an Atlanta loss. Like, all three of those things have to happen, obviously. New Orleans clinches the NFC South with the win and the Carolina loss. They can clinch a playoff berth with a win or a tie. And Dallas and Seattle have to tie. Or one of those two things have to happen. Carolina Panthers can clinch a playoff berth with a Carolina win or a tie. Or a Dallas-Seattle tie. Atlanta Falcons can clinch a playoff berth with a win. and Or a win. Or they tie. Dallas-Seattle has to tie. Or Detroit has to lose or tie. And that's the playoff scenarios. And now I am going to make my picks for the bowl games between today and... Christmas. I did very poor with my picks from last Saturday. I went one and four, only getting one pick right, which happened to be um, Middle Tennessee over Arkansas State. That was the only pick I got correct there. All right, tonight you got Akron and FAU in the Boca Raton Bowl. The Zips played well in conference play for the most part. But they lost the MAC title game to the Toledo Rockets. The, the Owls of Florida Atlantic absolutely dominated Conference USA. And they earned Lane Kiffin a new 10-year contract. And they won the conference title game over the North Texas Mean Green. The Owls are just the easier pick here. And, um, and I like the Owls big here tonight. In the Raton Bowl. The Frisco Bowl tomorrow night. You got Louisiana Tech and SMU. I think the Bulldogs underachieved. Um, and leveled the preseason expectations. They're supposed to be better than 6-6. Six and six. The Mustangs had a nice year. They lost three of their last four. But those three losses were either against better opponents. Or close games on the road. I really like the Mustangs here. They did lose their head coach. Chad Morris to Arkansas, which isn't great, but I like them to win here against Louisiana Tech tomorrow night. Thursday night, we got the Gasparilla Bowl between Temple and FIU. 
The Owls won three of the last four games to become bowl eligible. The Panthers had a very good first year under Butch Davis, and they were pretty good in conference play. Temple's just the better team, even though they have a worse record. The AAC is, I think, a lot better than the CUSA, although CUSA is very improved. But I just think the group of teams in the AAC as a whole are better, so give me Temple. Friday, you got a couple bowl games. The Bahamas Bowl, UAB in Ohio. The Blazers in their first season back from their three-year hiatus. And they they couldn't be more proud. Eight wins in the bowl game. A lot of people thought they were going to be among the worst teams in college football this year. The Bobcats had a good season, too, but they didn't play in the MAC title game, and that's okay because I like them here. But I do think it's going to be a close game because I think UAB is pretty good. So give me Ohio and the Bahamas Bowl. The famous Idaho Potato Bowl, Central Michigan and Wyoming. The Chippewas of Central Michigan very quietly had a great year in the MAC, going eight and four. The Cowboys of Wyoming went seven and five. Josh Allen, their quarterback, is supposed to be one of the top picks in the draft in 2018. And if he plays in this game, I think Wyoming will win. If not, Central Michigan is my pick. So I'm going to assume Josh Allen plays, so give me Wyoming. And like I said, if Josh Allen doesn't play, the picks get and change to Central Michigan. Saturday, you got the Birmingham Bowl, Texas Tech, and South Florida. The Red Raiders had to win their final two games, or I'm sorry, two of their final three games just to become bowl eligible from the Big 12. The Bulls were a preseason team that was ranked, but... Despite going 9-2, and two, I feel that they really didn't live up to the hype, and it was UCF that turned out to be the team that USF was supposed to be this year, which was the unbeaten team in the New Year's Six Bowl. But that said, the Bulls are much better than the Red Raiders, and Qu- Quentin Flowers, the quarterback of the Bulls, will lead the way here, so give me South Florida and a high-scoring game. And I mean high-scoring. The Armed Forces Bowl, you got... I, I think it's a pretty good game. San Diego State and Army. The Aztecs, great season. They only had two losses during the year. Both home games, ironically enough, to the two teams that played in the Mountain West Conference title game in Fresno State and Boise State. Other than that, San Diego State um, won the rest of their games. And the Black Knights of Army, amazing season. They beat Navy again. And... Could have won eight in a row going into this game if not for a close loss a few weeks ago in Denton against North Texas. I'm going to take the Aztecs here in a very close game, so give me San Diego State. The Dollar General Bowl, Saturday night, Appalachian State from the Sun Belt and Toledo from the MAC. The Mountaineers of Appalachian State, good season again. They play well in conference, and they're coming on a with a three-game winning streak. The Rockets of Toledo, great season. MAC champions. And I think the Rockets are the better team and give them in a shootout. Although Appalachian State's defense is pretty good, I don't know if they can stop a team like Toledo. So give me Toledo in a shootout. Christmas Eve, you got Fresno State and Houston. I like this bowl game. This is a nice one. The Hawaii Bowl is usually uh, mediocre sometimes, but this is actually a decent one. The Bulldogs, tremendous season, although they lost in the conference title game against Boise State. The Cougars have won three of the last four games. This was a tough call, but I like the Bulldogs of Fresno State here. I just like their story. They did, they weren't good the last couple years, so it'd be a nice turnaround, nice finish to a good turnaround for uh, Fresno State. So give me Fresno State in a close one over Houston. So next podcast will be Thursday, giving you the Week 16 picks and uh, the NBA Christmas game picks. So have a nice day, everybody.